Hi, in this video we will talk about how to draw a tree map in ggplot. We'll be using the libra library ggplot2 or the package ggplot2 and tree mapify. We would also need two another packages called reshape2 and dplyr. This is to manage our data. And the data which we will use in this example would be the COVID data from the website called rwordindata.org. And this is the complete URL and this is the CSV file. So let's go and run everything which we have written so far. So we got the data. If you notice that the data is based on um, each date, so for each date it gives the total um, COVID cases for that area or the region. So each country is one column. So let's transform this data and we'll be using the melt command and we would want to make this data in a long form and using the ID as the date. So this column, the date column as the ID, we want to transform this into a long table. So let's see what, what I mean by that. So we got only three columns in our new data set. So we have date, we have the variable. So each country has become the variable. So the label change for each country. And then this is the total COVID cases for that day. For example, if I look at this row, this is the date and the country variable, um, and then this is the total for each uh, for that particular day. And how about getting the latest data from all these? Because this contains the snapshot of each date, but we want just the latest um, snapshot. So I call it D today. So I'm uh, using the melt data and I just want to get rid of the variable word because we word gets the totals of each country. So we don't need that. So, and, and then I want to use the max of the date. So if I run it, you would see what I mean. I have only got 210 observations instead of 54,000 observations, which we started with. So this is giving us the latest date, which is this. And now we got each country and the total of that country, the total number of cases for that country as of that date. So this is our data, which we're going to use in our And we don't want to use all the data. So let, let's pick only the top 20 cases. So in this case, I'm using the dplyr saying arrange by the value in a, in a kind of a descending order. And I just want to pick the top 20. So if I say top 20, my top 20 gives me the top 20 countries as of that day in terms of the total number of cases. So with that data, we are ready to plot our data. You could have plotted this um, data into using a pie chart as well, but the tree map is a good alternative to a pie chart. And to plot our data, let's do that. ggplot, I'm using the top 20 as my data and fill would be the variable, so I'm um, using this variable or the country as, as a fill um, and then area of that tree map is coming from the value which is the numbers of number of cases so let's go and run this okay so we got a basic plot it doesn't give us much information at this moment except it has different colors um, so let's go and enhance it further I would want to see some text as well in that. And I am saying that I 
I want to see the label. So the only thing I've given now is that label should be the value. And then my tree map text is white color and the placement of that would be center. So let's see what it does for us. The tree map text command running it. And you can see that we got the number of cases which are these columns, like the value column. But again, it gives half the information. We don't know which country it belongs to. So we can go one step further. I would change this line to this. So my label is now the variable, and the variable is the country field. So the country, and this is the next line. So we want to see the country in the first line and the value in the, in the second line. So let's go and run it. Now it makes sense. We have a tree map, which gives the country and the, and the total number of cases for that. Because the numbers are very large, how about making those numbers as, as um, bit more formatted. So I'm using the pretty num um, and the value I'm saying is uh, uh, the separator would be um, the comma. So yeah, it makes sense now because the millions are separated by, by comma. So this is um, looking good. We can also add some more information in there. For example, the, the, the labs or the labels, title, subtitle so we got the label and the or the title and the subtitle as well now i want to play up with my uh, color also if you notice that the colors are being repeated so let's create a color palette of 20 different colors and for that i'm using another package called random color and I want to generate 20 different colors and then save that into um, a data set called palette. So if I run these three, I got a palette which has 20 different colors. And to use that palette, I would So everything else remains the same, except that I'm saying the scale fill manual and the value is the palette. So the, the colors are coming from these palettes. So using our manual scale, uh, color, uh, the fill scale, you got some random colors, but they are different from e each. Now there is another aspect to that. We can group um, the data um, and let, let me show you a different data set to start with and then I'll show you what I mean by grouping. So I'm using the empty cars data set which is the built-in data set. So I'm just grouping the data by cylinders and the gear and then counting which is the tally. So if I look at M, I have number of cylinders, number of gears and number of cars which, which belong to that particular uh, group. So there are number of cars which have four cylinders, but the gears are different. So I'll, I'll plot a basic map out of that. So if you, if you notice, um, it's exactly similar text, um, the, the, the syntax, except that in this case, I've said my data is M and I'm filling uh, by cylinder. So the colors would be dependent on number of cylinders and the area of the, the tree map would be dependent on the number of um, um, cars in that section or the frequency. And then I'm giving it uh, informative label saying gears equals. So the gears would be the gear and cylinders um, equals cylinders and, and then I'm formatting it um, as well. So let, let's run it and see what it does. Okay, so we got a map 
uh, a tree map. The cylinders are being treated as um, continuous variable. That's why you get this scale and the colors are the shades of um, the, the same, the blue color in this case. So um, if you want to use this, this is good. But if you want to give it a discrete coloring, then you treat your variable as, um, as a factor. So if I want, so I'm using this syntax, if I change this as, as factor, you would see now the colors have changed to discrete scales. So, um, and the standard um, palette is being applied. And you would also notice that the color has been grouped. So for example, in this case, because we are using cylinders as the fill, so wherever we have the same number of cylinders, the color is the same. So we can clearly identify that the green group is the six cylinder cars and the pink color is the four cylinder cars and the blue one is the eight cylinder cars. So you can see that it's kind of a group the color as well. So that's what I wanted to show you and that's what I meant by grouping. And with that, uh, we come to the end of this video. I hope you found this information useful. Thank you for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.